In this video, we're going to install Bluetooth in Home Assistant step-by-step. -step. First, I'll show you how to set up and configure using a Bluetooth adapter. And then I'll show you a quick and easy way to get started with a Bluetooth proxy. That way you can reach devices anywhere in your home. And then at the end, I'll share a tip that beginners often miss, but it can make all the difference. Okay, so first things first, using a Bluetooth adapter. This is by far the easiest way to get started with Bluetooth in a home assistant. Basically take the Bluetooth adapter, you plug it into the back and then power home assistant back on. It's pretty easy, but one thing you're gonna wanna watch out for is that occasionally with USB devices, sometimes those can have interference. So I recommend putting your Bluetooth adapter in a hub like this one with my Z-Wave and Zigbee adapters and then plug that hub into Home Assistant instead. That way you avoid any potential issues and your Home Assistant instance is ready to go. I've been using this specific Bluetooth adapter for about three years now, and it's been rock solid the whole time. If you wanna check it out and follow along, there's a link to it in the description. So once you power Home Assistant back on, head over to the integrations page, and you should see the Bluetooth integration automatically auto-discovered up there at the top. If you don't, you can always add it through the integrations button down in the lower right corner. So go ahead and click add, and then go through the quick setup to get it added Home Assistant. So after adding the Bluetooth adapter, if there are any devices that Home Assistant recognizes and that Home Assistant can control, you'll see them auto pop up in the discover area. For example, this cheap Govi thermometer and hygro, 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 hygrometer, hygrometer, hygrometer. Let me know how bad my pronunciation is in the comments. Anyways, this Govi thermo memer combo unit allows me to see the temperature and the humidity in my office where I have a lot of computers and home lab gear and stuff and it gets kind of warm in here. Normally I'd need to use Govi's app in order to see that temperature, but using Bluetooth and Home Assistant, I can scan for this Bluetooth device and add it directly into Home Assistant and see the temperature and the humidity automatically like any other sensor with an Home Assistant. So now that means I can create an automation using this device's temperature in order to turn the air conditioning on or the ceiling fan on if it gets too hot in a specific room. Now this works great if everything you want to control is within range of your Bluetooth adapter. But one of the problems with just an adapter is that you might not be within range. So how do we control these devices as well? And that's where Bluetooth proxies come into play. Check this out, because Bluetooth proxies are super powerful. Bluetooth proxies are typically ESP32 devices like this one or this one. They come in a wide variety of sizes and shapes, and they're super cheap. These basically give you extra eyes and ears around your home. So that way, when Bluetooth devices are within range of this, this will scan for those devices and then send that info to Home Assistant. ESP32 chips have both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and so that makes them perfect to use as Bluetooth proxies. It's basically stealth mode home automation. And so that's the best kind of automation. So they're pretty easy to get set up, but they require a few extra steps. But don't worry, I'll walk you through it. What we're gonna do first is install what's called ESP Home directly on this device. And the best part is you don't even need to know how to code in order to set these up. So to get started, you'll take the ESP32 device and you'll plug it into your PC or laptop. Then you'll head over to web.esphome.io in Chrome or in Edge. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Once it's connected, then go ahead and click on connect and choose the USB serial option. This will represent the device that you just plugged in. Then you're gonna click prepare for first use. This basically installs ESP Home onto your device using the generic settings that people often start with. We're gonna to need to make a few small tweaks, but this will get us 95% of the way there. So click install and then wait for it to finish. Once it's done, you'll be prompted to connect it to your Wi-Fi. So go ahead and enter that and then click next. Once that's done, head back over to Home Assistant and we're gonna to need to install an add-on in order for us to configure this correctly. So go to the add-ons and find the ESP Home Builder add-on. You're just gonna click that one and check all the boxes, then click start. Once you go into that add-on, you'll see a few discovered devices. Now I've ignored a few of them from some other sensors I have, but the new ESP device that we just configured will show up here in the upper left corner. We need to make a few small tweaks 
to that device. So go ahead and click take control and then go through these options in order to configure it before doing anything else. Now, basically you'll go down to the bottom of this file and you'll type in the proxy information. Now these settings are just telling the ESP32 only listen for devices. That's what the active parameter being false means, only listen. After adding those, go ahead and click save. Okay, so the moment of truth. We've configured our ESP32 to listen for Bluetooth devices. All we gotta do is install that configuration back onto our ESP32. So you'll go to that device, you'll click install, and then you'll choose the wireless option. That one's usually the easiest for most people. This will work a lot of coding magic behind the scenes, but our configuration that we just added gets translated into something the ESP32 can understand and then act on. And it all happens with us just clicking a couple buttons. That is wild. You'll probably have to wait a few minutes for it to finish, so just go ahead and wait for that before continuing on. So once it's done, you'll then go back to the Home Assistant Integrations page, and you should see it auto-discovered there on the Integrations page. So you can go ahead and click Add, and that adds your brand new ESP32 as a Bluetooth proxy to Home Assistant using ESP Home. And the cool thing about ESP Home is that it automatically added our Bluetooth proxy to the integration for us. We didn't have to like add it separately or try to like configure it or anything like that. After doing the initial configuration, it just shows up in our Bluetooth integration. That's pretty sweet. But when it comes to placement and reliability of our Bluetooth devices, we're gonna wanna keep a few things in mind. If you're using just the adapter and nothing else, then you're gonna want your Home Assistant instance to be in a central location, as centralized as possible. That way, it will be able to communicate with all of your different Bluetooth devices without the range being too bad or there being some sort of interference. Unfortunately, range kind of varies based on where you live or what you have set up. In perfect conditions, the adapter can reach up to 131 feet, according to the manufacturer, but real life scenario is much, much smaller than that. That's why using several Bluetooth proxies will basically eliminate all the range problems from using just the adapter. Generally speaking, I recommend starting with one Bluetooth proxy per room. That means you get good coverage around your home and you'll be able to see generally most devices that you'll be interested in controlling. Then if you need more or you just want better coverage, you can add a second or a third proxy depending on your needs, but usually one proxy per room is a good starting point. ESP32 devices are super cheap, and so if you do need another one, you can just buy it and then flash it with ESP Home, like we went over earlier, and then you'll have another Bluetooth proxy ready to go. So now that you've started adding Bluetooth devices to Home Assistant, you'll find that you often want more than just a Bluetooth thermometer. If you're looking for a tiny device that is a Bluetooth proxy that is also a motion sensor, then you're gonna to wanna to check out the Apollo MSR2. So you're gonna to wanna to check that one out next and I'll see you in the next one.